This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. All right, welcome to Lo-Fi Early Saturday Morning. How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? I guess it's afternoon. Well, I guess it's all relative. We had a giant meteorite over Russia. It happened at night, about 2.13 a.m. We happened to get it on all our dashboard cams. You may be saying like, hey, why does everybody in Russia have dashboard cams? Well, apparently, money makes people do crazy things. And there's a bunch of insurance scams, like a dude will stage an accident or make you get in an accident. And then you get sued for millions of dollars. It is so widespread that everybody has dashboard cameras. I thought about getting a dashboard camera in America just to catalog all the idiots driving. Like, anyway, so yeah, it exploded. Apparently it was going fast. This is your life and it's ending one minute at a time. Get busy living or get busy dying. All right, I'm going to read Todd Durden. A little over a year ago, in February 2013, a meteor traveling at 19 miles per second above Chalbalinsk in the Russian your alls exploded in the morning sky, recorded by countless dash cams with the resulting shock waves shattering windows hundreds of miles away. Fast forward to this night when residents of Russia's North Murmansk region witnessed the fall of a celestial body similar to the famous Chelbolinsk meteorite on Saturday night. It flashed at 2.10 a.m. local time and was clearly seen in the sky. However, no sound of explosions was heard. So it's not a fireball. So it's not a fireball. Officials say that the nature of the celestial body is unknown. However, since there were no warnings of any ICBM tests overnight, the meteor theory is the most valid one. Then again, the major Russian base of Severomorsk and the administrative center of the Russian Northern Fleet is located precisely in this area. So one can see why some of the already percolating theories suggest this may have been nothing but a military test in conjunction with aliens in the Federal Reserve. Uh, okay, sweet. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. They're a bit sketchy over in Russia about meteors, meteorites, asteroids. And rightly so. A little over a year ago in the Chelabalinsk meteor sky explosion, which is world famous, people got hurt and a lot of stuff got broken. You'd be a little gun shy too, you know? So we gotta figure out, are we gonna take NASA's and the global space communities. Hey dudes, we need to start all working as a team to find and figure out ways to protect yourself from asteroids. Or do we just keep sticking our head in the sand and our finger in our butt? So up to you guys. Oddly enough, I found out about this story on Zero Hedge. I almost never talk about anything space related. I used to post my videos on there, but everybody gave me damn thumbs. They're like, we only want to talk about how great gold is. And I'm like, yeah, well, you guys don't understand meteors, do you? Or meteorites. Okay. Nobody got hurt? Why do they always happen over Russia? Does that mean that the Russians have better relations with the aliens than we do? I mean, isn't there anybody Barack Obama can get along with? Congress? You know, like, if the aliens are turned on you, you guys are in real trouble. Because if you lost the people and you lost the aliens, and the Russians, man, what do you got left? Except for your drone army and your endless prisons and your trillions of bullets, I guess. Yeah, okay, so nobody got hurt. Um, but I gotta say this one more time, that unless NASA is totally lying about asteroids and meteors and comets, that they think it could be a problem in the future. And whereas our government is dismantling NASA, turning over to the private sector, and I'm sure you feel real safe having Walmart and Monsanto protect you. But I don't know if it's that smart. I mean, you know, we're in a printing phase where we're just printing a ton of money. Why don't, you know, we double NASA's budget? Shit, I'd rather see an extra $18 billion go to NASA than... Have 85 billion a month goes straight into the stock market from quantitative easing. You are not the contents of your wallet. The things you own end up owning you. And some nerd will be like, no, they tapered quantitative easing. It's now down to 65 billion a month. And it's like, dude, you don't know. Yeah, why don't you get the Fed to open their books and then you can start telling me about how much they are and are not spending. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so, you know, they basically open and crowdsourced defending the Earth from meteors. And um, they put together groups on how to respond if we do find a big one. And the other day, I think it was asteroid GY38, I forget, 145, I forget. I'll look it up. But they just found it like eight days ago, and it's 1.3 kilometers in size. I mean, you know, something's happening, man. I mean, well, I think it's hilarious is uh, there's always one of those guys. You know, one of the Hail Hydra science guys. Like, for example, over at Zero Hedge, somebody's correcting Tyler 
where Tyler Durden, who, who runs the site, supposedly got how fast the meteorite was actually going. Uh, and then they argued. And it's like, who knew, man? Do you ever stop watch going? He's like, no, I stop watching the YouTube video. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, like, you guys just always got to be right, right? You just always got to be right. Like, I'm right, Hail Hydra. I'm right, Hail Hydra. All right, whatever. They're a bit sketchy. All right, anyway. Okay, so one's going to be light, simple, and easy. So I guess that means it's almost over. No fear, no distractions. The ability to let that which does not matter truly slide. It's not like love or anything, but I think I like you too. Self-improvement is masturbation. And masturbation is fun. Peace out. Thanks for watching. See you on the flip side.